Hello, this is Bobby and Copal TV Repair with a hopefully quick video today showing what you guys pay pay us for when you buy an EEPROM for Vizio M550 SV from us. This comes up often with uh, all kind of NAND EEPROMs for all kind of TVs, the ones that are um, paged in blocks as opposed to linear, straight, classic EEPROM devices. The page ones are more complicated, they have file structure, they have uh, different organization depending on, on the bad blocks and it's not a simple matter as uh, copying them. And many times for different boards, they're not the problem with the board to begin with. So when people buy new ones and uh, their board doesn't get fixed, they oftentimes, unfortunately enough, come back to us blaming us that the EEPROM that they got from us is not working just because their board is not working. So this video, and I've done similar videos before, I have not done one for this board, is just to show why are you guys paying for uh, for these EEPROMs. As you can see, this is where the EEPROM for M550 SV sits, and as you can see, we have a socket here. And what we do after we program them, I'm not going to show you how do we program them for a number of different reasons, but I will show you that what we have here is a bunch of them already pre-programmed. There you go. Unix H27 AUG 812 or I12 BTR. And the M550 is with BTRs and the XVT 553, 473, M550, etc. are with MTR. So anyhow, we have a bunch of those. And pardon my camera skills. This has been pointed out in other videos. I'm not the best cameraman in the world. I will readily admit to that. And this is definitely not the best camera. I'll have to have a difficult task of doing this one-handed or pull somebody to help me with that, but I would rather have them work on problems. So first leg is top right, there you go, the point here is on the top right side. So I plug it in and I will close the socket. We don't sell the socket of course along with the IC, we sell it separately uh, at our website. Close the socket hang the board in a way that will take just a little more to fall down but for the sake of video this is easier and then the power cable there's power cable down here connect the TV now let's go and see how about the remote I will use an LG remote because the power on code is the same. Now when when those EEPROMs fail, and I'm powering it on now, the visual comes up. Uh, on these boards, like on all other boards, the EEPROMs are not the only thing that may fail. The main processor may fail, the HDMI chip may fail, uh, the HDMI selector IC, a bunch of things may fail. When the EEPROM fails, usually what happens is a very slow image showing up on the screen, not responsiveness. Uh, it's like it's like a hung computer. It's spending 99% of its power somewhere else. You press a button, it takes seconds to a minute for the TV to respond. That is a good sign of a failed uh, main EEPROM. Of course, it can fail and this may never start as well. Uh, so this is one, usually if it gets to here, we don't test it anymore, this is quite enough, it responds, so yeah, it will not respond to that one, because that's an LG. Um, I need to get up a Vizio remote, but we do know from experience that if the EEPROM gets it to a point where it does that, it is working fine. Um, we don't we don't test, and I will readily admit to that. All the functionality, and when people have problems, they they usually have them with the TV not starting up, hanging on the Visio logo at startup, or something like that. 
so what what we do is we just test that portion of it this, this is smart TV testing all of those things separately well say just too much forever so what we do is the ones that are tested are going in a separate line and I just fix the next one hole has to be on top right the first pin that is put it in and this is done whether you believe it or not for every single NAND flash EEPROM that goes for sale or for use by us not a single exception every single one go back there or it will be simpler maybe to just get to find it somewhere all right plug in of course it is done faster if you don't have to put a camera and um, where did I leave my remote there you go press and power visual came up so a betty from but not necessarily only a betty prom will hang here on that visual or may not show it at all if the prom is empty altogether if you got an empty prom of course it will never show that because that e prom contains all the firmware for the visual this one passed through the visual screen because they're brand new they just default to the initialization screen you will not get that with this board m550sv if there is no EEPROM or if it's soldered badly uh, or if it doesn't work now there are other TVs where the firmware is on a different EEPROM device and they would start there is a Samsung the D series the E series after on all of the ones where the firmware is on a separate EEPROM from the storage memory and again this one goes here getting next one uh, on all the ones where the main memory is separated from the storage memory where all the apps go usually those run some version of Linux but not necessarily it can be it can be any operating system and a lot of them are based on Linux or Unix based ones uh, where the firmware and the, the kernel are on a separate EEPROM and the storage is usually on such a night flash but the TV can boot up and can show the home screen without uh, without the storage memory and when it comes to it usually it just either freezes or power cycles or something else but those the early generation smarts or all the ones where everything is in one chip uh, they would never get to here if the memory is corrupting well if the memory is corrupt it depends on where it is corrupt it may not it may hang on later on uh, but not with those ones those are chips that don't have a single bad block or even if they did it would be rearranged uh, by the writing software so this is how it says them and this is how we know those chips are working again we don't go and I admit to that and I don't find it a problematic because this is a smart TV it has tons of functionality of course we don't change every don't test every single piece of it but most of the time where people have problems it is that either it goes to the uh, hangs on the visual screen or never starts to begin with uh, which would be a sign for either poorly soldered EEPROM now on the other visios uh, XVT uh, the ones on the on the early generations where they flash in the beginning to initialize if the TV is flashing that means the EEPROM is soldered well here you don't have that luxury you don't know because you just have a, a boot mode which is optimized and faster and it doesn't need those 90 seconds or so to uh, Uh, to initialize and transfer memory from the paged Oop, that was it was weird I I replaced the from while the TV was still on 
and God only knows if it was initialized, which is why I had to repower again. Otherwise, it may not have started because it's, it's just a hot plug. Now, however, it did start up. Here's the video. Okay, that's 10 minutes. Um, it, it could have been shown and said faster, and I do apologize for that. Again, I'm not the best camera man operator in the world. Uh, I do electronics, and I will be returning to that. Here's another testing one. So, I showed you how we test for. We test, again, every single one of them. We're probably twice to three times as fast if I don't have to talk. Uh, sometimes I do it, sometimes somebody else. Whatever the case, though, those problems got tested. And uh, good luck. Thank you.